Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with Leader Chuck Schumer, who's done an extraordinary job uh, over the last several years ushering uh, into law an incredible agenda on behalf of the American people to make life better for everyday Americans, which is what drives House Democrats, Senate Democrats, certainly President Biden. Uh, and we're thankful for President Biden's leadership. And as House Democrats, we're thankful for the tremendous leadership of Chuck Schumer. The Republicans continue to double and triple down on their extreme agenda. We know they're extreme as it relates to reproductive freedom. We believe in a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. Republicans want to impose a nationwide ban. We believe in Social Security and Medicare. Extreme MAGA Republicans want to destroy Social Security and Medicare. We believe in democracy. Many extreme MAGA Republicans apparently don't believe in democracy anymore. They have an extreme agenda. It continues. And the so-called Fair Tax Act is another example of the extremist agenda that Republicans are trying to jam down the throats of the American people. The so-called Fair Tax Act is unfair, unconscionable, and un-American. It will impose a tax hike that is dramatic on 90% of the American people, working families, middle class folks, seniors, and those who aspire to be part of the middle class, the poor, the sick, and the afflicted. It will impose an age tax on older Americans in this nation who throughout their lives paid into the system through income tax and now will be double and triple taxed by the imposition of a 30% sales tax that would create an enormous burden on older Americans in this country. Third, this unfair tax act would detonate Social Security by eliminating its source of funding. This legislation is extreme and it is functionally the GOP tax scam part two. We will expose it and under the tremendous leadership of Senate Democrats, Leader Schumer, in partnership with House Democrats, do everything we can to stop it. Thank you, Hakeem. And I want to thank again, Hakeem, for being here. So this plan is dangerous. It's a disaster. It would impact just about every single American family for the worse. It cannot be understated how devastating this would be to just about every family. The, this so-called fair tax plan is the craziest yet. It's a real doozy. It's hard to believe they came up with it. It would completely abolish the IRS, no more IRS, and just impose a 30% tax on everything. So here Americans are worried about inflation, and the Republican Party, many of them, are saying, we want to increase your price, what you pay, by another 30%. It'd be the largest tax increase for working Americans ever, ever. So the party, this MAGA Republican Party, has no concern for working people. Every single day, they're simply trying to have a new plan to cut more taxes on the wealthy and impose it on average working Americans. Steve Forbes, hardly a liberal, you know what he said? It would raise the cost of a house, of buying a house, by $125,000. Um, it would raise the cost of buying a car by $10,000. It would raise your average grocery bill by $3,500 a year. People are complaining about the high prices of groceries. Eggs are already too high. 
they'd add another dollar fifty for each dozen of eggs. Milk is high, another dollar seventy more. Again, thirty five hundred dollars on groceries. But it would also mean thousands in uh, more that you'd have to pay in insurance premiums, in your out of pocket health care costs, and seniors who have saved and saved and saved for their retirements. First, we don't know if there'd be any more Social Security, but those who even have Social Security, it would mean they'd have 30% less buying power right away, a third lower. A, almost every American family would be devastated. So let me just say this. As long as I am majority leader, this devastating, unfair, nasty, an almost crazy plan is not going to pass. Not going to happen in the Senate. Absolutely. But it shows you how extreme these MAGA Republicans are. I have rarely seen such an extreme proposal in all my years in government. They're so out of touch with reality. Do they know what average people go through? Do they know that the wealthy are the only people who during COVID were doing even better? They want to help them some more. And it would just, every American would have a tough, tough time making ends meet under this. I believe it could cause the next Great Depression if we were to impose it. Thank God there are firewalls in Leader Jeffries and the Democrats in the House. Thank God we have a Democratic majority in the Senate. So the craziness that they're going to try to do, believe me, these MAGA Republicans are intent on doing this, will not happen. Questions on this subject first. Look, we have we are we have always defended Social Security. We will always defend Social Security. Democrats had a plan to make sure that Social Security is solvent. This plan would kill Social Security. Yes. Well, everyone thought that Leader McCarthy would never go along with the MAGA Republicans as he ran for Speaker. And now he is still committed to them, still, to put this bill before committee. I don't underestimate the power over McCarthy of these extreme MAGA Republicans. We have to fight this plan now before it gains any more of a head of steam. Too many Republicans support it. You know, this so-called tax plan, which would devastate working families and cut taxes for the wealthiest 1% in America, is so extreme, so out of touch, so unconscionable that you wonder, like, who's sitting in some dungeon, some laboratory, some basement, cooking up these extreme ideas to try to jam them down the throats of the American people. But that's what's happening. And it's part of the House Republican agenda, which is why we're speaking out against it, making it clear that the stakes are high to the American people. And we're going to work to fight to defeat it, expose it, and make it clear that it's part of an overall extreme agenda to undermine working families and the middle class in America in order to elevate the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected as part of some scheme desire to subsidize further the lifestyles of the rich and shameless. You know, if someone told you that this was a real plan, you'd say, no, it never would be. But the right-wing MAGA Republicans are that far out that they actually believe in this. It's wild. It's unbelievable, as I said. It's just the biggest Lollapalooza I have ever seen around here. Yeah. This, this young lady. Lisa. Uh, let's stay on this topic for one or two more. Did you have one on this topic? Go ahead. Yes, Senator Schumer, Mr. Jeffries, 
why is it important to highlight this when it would certainly die in the Senate, when it would certainly die in the Senate, and I'm sure even a lot of Republicans would object it. Why is it important to highlight this now when it has little It's very important, first, to make sure this plan dies. As I said, the right-wing MAGA Republicans have a lot of power, certainly in the House. We saw that in the last week. But second, we have to show the American people who's on your side and who isn't. You get a lot of rhetoric about protecting working people from the other side. They're not protecting working people. They're putting, they're, they're, they're harming working people in a way we've never seen before. I think that's exactly right. And the extreme MAGA Republicans are trying to pull the wool over the eyes of the American people, which is why we need to expose them and their extreme plan. The fact that they're suggesting that this would cause increased fairness tells you everything you need to know in terms of why Leader Schumer, we're thankful for him and his Senate Democrats and our efforts in the House, need to expose the extremism. Yeah. Public sentiment is everything. With it, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. That's Abraham Lincoln. And so in this public sentiment discussion and debate, we're making sure the American people clearly understand why this so-called tax fairness plan will be a disaster for them. Yeah. I mean, again, I think it's very important for the American people to see how extreme the Republican Party has become. We'd like to have a nice mainstream Republican Party. We wouldn't agree with them, but we could actually get things done. I don't think a, a mainstream Republican Party would flirt with the devastation of uh, a debt ceiling uh, that is not, uh, uh, you know, of defaulting on the debt. Um, I think it's important to show how extreme these people are, how far out they are. Yes? Since you brought up debt ceiling. Uh, okay, we'll move to other subjects <laughs> quickly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you have said that you want to see the Republican plan. Uh, whatever yes. The, you want to see them put the cuts on the table. Senator Manchin suggested today that he would prefer to see Speaker McCarthy meet with President Biden to have a conversation about it. Do you, do you find any value in the President negotiating with Speaker McCarthy? Until Speaker McCarthy has a plan, and a plan that can pass in the House with his Republican support, his going to the White House is like going with no cards in his hand. <laughs> the bottom line is, the first step since McCarthy and many Republicans are playing brinksmanship, holding hostages, Instead of doing what we've done four times with debt ceiling, three times under Trump, twice with Republican House, Senate, and President, instead playing that dangerous game of brinksmanship, um, it's, it's incumbent on them to show, okay, what's your plan? We have a plan. Pass the debt ceiling without hostage taking, without uh, um, uh, any brinksmanship. What's their plan? They haven't shown it. They have an obligation on something as serious as the debt ceiling to show it. Show us the plan. Show the American people the plan. Show your own caucus the plan and see if you got the votes to pass it. Mr. Jefferson, can you answer that question? Do you think the Speaker should meet with the President on the debt ceiling? I associate myself with the remarks of the distinguished gentleman from New York. <laughs> uh, There's a difference between negotiation and blackmail. Negotiation, as Leader Schumer has indicated, we have a plan, pass the debt ceiling consistent with what has been done under Democratic presidents and Republican presidents, including three times under former President Trump, and then we can have a negotiation, a discussion about the future of spending moving forward through the normal process, right? That's negotiation. But what they're essentially saying on the other side of the aisle is we will detonate Social Security, detonate Medicare, detonate veterans benefits, or possibly even risk a catastrophic default for the first time in American history that will send us spiraling toward a deep recession, if not a depression, unless you cave into our extreme MAGA Republican demands. That ain't negotiation. That's blackmail. Well, yeah, my, 
Well, my communication with uh, Speaker McCarthy on this issue is in the public domain, and my letter speaks for itself. Uh, but in terms of the Intel Committee, we're in the process of formulating our entire slate, uh, and I expect that that will happen sooner rather than later. Last question. Leader Schumer, have you spoken with uh, Speaker McCarthy on any negotiations that relate to the deficit, debt, the debt limit, and I have, if not, do you plan to? Yes, I do plan to speak with uh, Speaker McCarthy. Obviously, as Democratic leader of the Senate, and he's the Republican leader of the House, we have to try to get together and see what we can do in a bipartisan way. Uh, that's true. But on the debt ceiling, you know what I'd say to Speaker McCarthy when we sit down? Show us your plan. Thank you, everybody.